And police are still searching for a man suspected of aggravated robbery. Now, the incident happened at the Glen Willow Apartments early Saturday morning. Chipotle hopes a temporary loyalty program will lure customers back into its restaurants. This, of course, follows a series of food safety scares. Good morning, everyone. Police are still trying to sort out some conflicting stories about a shooting that left a woman dead. Witnesses say there was some sort of dispute outside of a bar in the 3100 block of Morgan. Text dot officials have put up barricades in the area of the Oso Creek Bridge to redirect traffic away from that area. As McLovio said, it was getting to a cresting point. In fact, five feet over flood stage, which is 20 feet. But another problem uh, affecting the city. Take a look over here. Jen Lee, I've channeled my inner poet to capture the contributions of the evening viewers. Of course, as you both mentioned, for a great cause. He has sold 1,500 of his folk albums. Back to you. He did the monster man. <laughs> <laughs> it this like. land is your land. Good afternoon. Thanks so much for spending part of your day with us. I'm Rachel Cole in for Mike Galaspia, and our weekend is off to a soggy start. Meteorologist McLovio Perez is keeping an eye on the rain. He's live in the studio with more. Hey, Mac. Bad news for our noses. Red tide won't be leaving the area anytime soon. In fact, Texas Parks and Wildlife officials are still finding dead fish. We got it. We <laughs> successfully handed off the baton, otherwise known as the spirit stick, and we will tell you more about this. But for now, some other stories we're working on later today on Chris 6 News. We're following the latest after that incident in the Lena neighborhood. Rachel, how's it going out there? Yeah, that's right, Mike. Well, this is one of the highest voter turnout polling places in Nueces County, and we're here today. And as you can see right behind me, they're kind of keeping track of how many people have come to vote. Listen up, lovebirds. Your cell phone could be putting a damper on your love life. According to a recent survey, people in relationships don't like being fubbed by their partner. McLovio, we don't have any fubbing issues, do we, during this during during the show? I'm sorry, Excuse you were saying sir? something? Sir, oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to need a check of that yes, forecast uh, now that yes. you told us all uh, about sorry. Joaquin. We want to see what our weekend weather is shaping Okay, up uh, hold okay. on a second. Uh, let me get this. Uh, yes, it's folks, uh, very pleasant weekend. In well, just amazing out here, these first responders with no hesitation to help the people in need and the victims here at the scene. And we just spoke to the fire marshal who says that there were, in fact, two confirmed victims who had been transported to the hospital, suffered severe, severe burns. And uh, we're going to bring you the latest on the information as it comes in and once we talk to the PIO of the police department. Mike. City officials say there are plans to build a hotel right here in this area, but as you can see, cleanup still has a long way to go. Animal control officers say, though, not all the dogs are quite that easy to catch. Take these two in particular. They say anytime the dogs get wind of the scent of the truck, they take off running and they can't catch them. Police say it all started here at the Bay Point Apartments when the woman pulled up in her red Mustang, tried to punch in her gate code, and was approached by the three suspects who held her at gunpoint. The focus of demolition will be on the west side of the old hospital property, and officials with Del Mar College say they're not sure what exactly they plan to put here next. Probably the craziest thing I've ever been a part of. I started crying once it all happened, seeing blood and people sliced up and kids crying. and Tear-jerking moments for these two men as they quickly made their way across the La Palmera Mall parking lot to rescue victims trapped inside their homes. We were actually at IHOP. We heard an explosion. We ran outside. We thought a car ran into IHOP. But uh, come to find out, we saw the smoke, so we started running over there. Omar Zatuni and Mike Obenhaus quickly began pulling people out of the burning home next to the home that was leveled in the blast. Fire officials say it's thanks to Zatuni and Obenhaus' heroic actions that saved lives. It was a little boy, a little girl, a guy, he was all cut up, um, a mom, a dad. And then afterwards we ran back into the fire when they told us not to. And uh, we, found, we found a person there. And I'm just glad that we were able to help out as much as we did. We got him on a stretcher, got him into the ambulance, and uh, I just hope everything's all right. Zatuni has first aid experience and says he was just at the right place at the right time. He says anyone in that situation would have done the same thing. Rachel Cole, KRIS, 6 News. We start here on a public website called crimereports.com. The site shows a colorful map of Corpus Christi, and these icons indicate where each sexual assault took place. All of this information comes directly from the Corpus Christi Police Department. In any given month, you can see clusters of sexual crimes in specific areas, a number of assaults near Crosstown and SPID, some scattered south of I-37, and multiple markers listed downtown, an area of the city one rape victim says to avoid. You can tell just by drive, walking down the road, you know, trying to go to the bus stop. You know, there's a lot of, you know, people that want to stop and look at you, and anywhere downtown it would be, you know, a 
a place to be aware of. Aware and mindful of the number of victims here in the coastal bend. This victim didn't want to be on camera, but says she felt compelled to warn others of the sexual crimes in the community and the high number of rapes included. Like you have a sign on your forehead that, you know, like it's okay to abuse me. You know? She says she was raped and sexually abused more than once while living in the downtown area. And it's one of those things that keeps you awake at night. You know, it's hard to sleep because um, you're always replaying that over in your, in your mind. That haunting memory is burned in her mind, a real-life nightmare of being violently raped by a friend who took advantage of her during a moment of weakness. I thought I trusted them, and pretty much when I um, went to sleep, they assaulted me. You know, there really wasn't much I could do about it. I mean, I was kind of helpless. Lieutenant Kelly Isaacs is the supervisor of the CCPD Sexual Assault Division. She says sexual crimes between two people that know each other are the most common. The perpetrator is going to be acquaintances or neighbors or um, co-workers, that sort of thing. Detectives say most of the sexual assault cases that get reported are by individuals that end up going out together. Then drugs or alcohol become a factor, and officers say with one or both of those people using substances, things happen that shouldn't. We monitored CrimeReports.com and saw a trend over the last four months. The same areas were showing clusters of sexual assaults occurring over and over again in the downtown area, west of downtown, and south from there. Those are areas where women need to be more aware of their surroundings. Last year, CCPD tallied 184 reported rape victims and nearly 400 more sexual assaults. Keep in mind, those are just the incidents that are reported. The victim who shared her story with 6 News says it's important for all victims to come forward. I don't think you should ever be ashamed to or scared to go report something. If, if you don't report it, then it's going to happen to somebody else. She wants everyone to have a fighting chance and says to be conscious of your surroundings and keep your head up. Don't become part of the sexual crime statistics in Corpus Christi. Rachel Cole, KRIS, 6 News. Imagine boarding a bus blind not knowing which direction you're going, yet still planning to be at your place of interest without much help. That's how traveling is for Marshall Burns, who's visually impaired. When I was growing up, I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life, and I finally figured out after a couple of experiences that I'd had that I wanted to help people with disabilities become as independent as possible in their community. That's where the travel training comes in. Burns is the mobility coordinator with the RTA. He assists those looking to develop independent travel skills through the free program. It's an empowering feeling uh, to be able to have that independence. And I'm grateful that I'm able to help provide that to somebody. Burns has been training individuals and groups for more than three years with RTA, but he's been independently traveling for close to 20 allowing him to get to work and do much more. A lot of people are depending on public transportation so they can be active in their community. He says his trainees can face a range of obstacles like shoddy sidewalks, but it's nothing they can't work through together. They may just need help learning how to uh, plan a trip or uh, learning the safest way to get to their bus stop. Burns says after 25 years, the Americans with Disabilities Act has helped make public transportation more smooth for all passengers looking to get out and ride.